on the countdown now to the start of the medal race RSX men and looking at the overall standings it's Ricardo Santos of Brazil on 16 and then we have Primo Slaw Mia Chizinski or Pont as he's called by his friends second overall Nick Dempsey of Great Britain third and Yao Rodriguez from Portugal fourth Realistically, they are the four going for the podium. Also from Poland, Fedor Maciuski. Right, we're inside two minutes now. Crowding up by the committee boat. Let's go down onto the water to get a handle on just the atmosphere and the conditions. Richard Parslow. Hi PJ, it's uh, looking quite light at the moment, very patchy across the course, we're very close to the shore here, and it's patchy and shifty, just off the beach in Kashkai. Well oh, patchy and shifty, that is really going to put a real emphasis on being in the right spot at the right occasion as we're coming down to the final minute. We notice Richard, they're all crowding up by the committee boat, one minute. Yeah, I think they all want to go right on this one, PJ. It's a very short line. Dan Slater, real pressure on here. And the key thing quite clearly for the uh, the top runners in this is getting away cleanly and quickly. Definitely, and as we saw in the women's medal race, it's very patchy and anything can happen. Um, we saw in the women's race that the, uh, the leaders not necessarily go on to win the race and uh, I'm sure these guys are keeping their eyes out right now even to make last minute tactical decisions of where they want to come off the line and where that next gust of wind is to try and get going. Now th this is only the second world championship in this RSX class which is new for the Olympics in 2008. Ten seconds now, really getting serious. Three, the start, the RSX men's medal race. And they're struggling to get going. Dear, oh dear, that was not a good start for the Spaniard. He is struggling right at the back. That's Ivan Pastor Lafatine. Oh, it's just hard to get momentum, hard to get going here. Richard, it's hard work, the Canadian energy, they're struggling to get going and the stakes on this are so high, a world championship hangs on it. Yeah, that's right. Looks like uh, Nikos, Nikos Kaklamanakis of Greece has got away, he's got to the right. He's being followed by Pont of Poland and uh, Nick Dempsey from Great Britain. And they're working the rigs, just flapping them, trying to drive the boat through. It's very light at the moment. Well, a little bit of pressure the, coming from the right. That is the three, Nicholas Kakamanklis, who we can see down to Lewis. Then you've got Pont between, but in the middle of those three, and it is Nicholas Dempsey of Great Britain. He started well in, in the windward position there. Dan. Well, as you can see, that it's just an absolute physical battle now between the guys. They're fighting for position, pumping the sail as hard as they can. And, and really just trying to see there's the dark patch coming down on the water now trying to first into that dark patch will be gone and uh, they're just really going to work you see Nikos now kicking into gear and pumping a sail really hard to get to that dark patch well the key thing here of course is just get going get momentum and try and get into that dark patch a breeze and then try and at least get into the planing situation but then comes the other issue of one, what about tactics? We see someone, as we're looking down the course, breaking out to the right there. It'll actually be to their left as they're looking up the course. But really, this is not easy to get underway and the stakes are so high. Now it's twice round. There's good breeze in the background there. For those boats that are, hello, here we are. We're starting to get underway. Now this is uh, Julian Bontemps from France. See PJ in that picture there, we, we see we've got a big dark patch over towards the right hand side of the course and uh, seeing the French sailor trying to get over across the fleet now while he's got a little bit of pressure, trying to get the board up and planing and try and get himself over to the, towards the right hand side and cover the fleet. 
Now, just as quickly as that, and they get up to this issue of planing, and we'll get uh, Dan just to expand on that, because we can see some of them are off. Well, what happens when they get into the pressure? They, the board will just increase in boat speed hugely and they'll be doing another five, six knots faster than what they were doing when they came off the start line. And that's a brilliant example because Pond is off Richard. Pond is screaming. Yeah, he's in the pressure now, PJ. And he's flying across the course. He's taking just underneath Julian Bontemps, I think. Yeah. He's still all trying to get out to the right-hand side. They think the next bit of pressure will be coming down from the right. And I've got to say, that's what, that's the way it looks from here. And interesting that we can see that Nicholas Kakamanklis from Greece, he's decided that he is actually breaking left and now is on starboard. The opposite tack to the boats that we can see at the moment. And he's heading across to the left. We wonder why, what hunch has he got? Well, I think PJ, yeah, I think he got into that pressure first. He, he was the one that was able to use it and get back towards the top mark. Don't forget, they're sailing very wide angles on these RSX boards when the breeze is like this. So to get back towards the middle of the course when you get the opportunity is pretty important. Right now, so Richard, a lot of them now are now breaking left as they, we can see they're all back onto starboard. Yeah, that's right. I think what happened is uh, when the breeze comes in, it's actually a lift on starboard. So if they carried on on port, if they carried on trying to dig into that right corner, they'd be on a very, very bad heading. They'd be almost heading away from the windward mark. So when the wind comes in, they use it to try and make a little bit of a gain on the lifted starboard tack, BJ. It's incredible, as though someone told those three sailors to all tack at the same time. It was like maritime ballet. Richard, it looks, from the pictures we're seeing here, it looks very close to the shoreline. Is that, how far from the shoreline are they? Well, at the moment, I'd say they're about uh, half a mile offshore, uh, the off offshore on the right-hand side of the course, but the windward mark is just a couple of hundred yards off the beach. The bay curves around here at Kashgar, they're sailing towards Estoril at the moment, out on the right-hand side of the course, but when they tack back and come back on starboard tack, they'll be coming almost up the beach in Kashgar. Right, well, we can see Greece right in the foreground. Pole out, pond out to the left now. Behind that and to his right, that is Brazil. That's Ricardo Santos. And he is the overall leader going into this medal race. Up to his right is GBR. And that's Nick Dempsey. So the big guns are all bunched together at the moment. CPJ. Yeah, that's there. right. Carry on, Richard. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, we've got the silver medalist and the bronze medalist from the Athens Olympics. And the other guy, the overall leader, Ricardo Santos, I don't know if you remember, it's the guy who went from gold medal position to fourth on the last day. So he's got something to prove against these guys. Yeah, he led into the final day in Athens, I remember it well. And he dropped to get the leather medal. And he's certainly burning to reverse that. And he does start today. This is the penultimate day of the 2007 ISAF Sailing World Championships here in Portugal. With a good lead, he's on 16 points. Pont from Poland is on 24. But in these yes, tricky conditions, as both Richard and Dan have been telling us, fall into a hole and it could be a heartbreaker. Yeah, the leaders are in the pressure now. Uh, two leading boats who came further left are going back across to the right and the boats are screaming towards the windward mark now on starboard tack. Well, there's Pont from Poland. Mia Chesinski going through the tack quick, smooth. Fifth in Athens, eighth at the Olympics before that in Sydney. First at the European Championships this year. Really, it looks a jigsaw or patchwork quilt down Slater, doesn't it? There's black water in one area and not so dark in another area, and they've got to work their way through that minefield to get the pressure that you and Richard are talking about. Well, once they go around the top mark, it's going to be hope like hell that they've got the pressure that you can go around, use the speed, and try and sail away from the fleet. It's, uh, it's definitely not a, not a clear-cut race, this one, and we'll see uh, the leaders as they come around the top mark looking around, and the, I'd imagine, given that the, that right-hand side going up the beat has been very favoured, 
and the pressure seems to be coming out of there that, that a lot of these guys might jibe quite early and, uh, and run down and try and use that pressure down the right hand side of the downwind. Well we can see where they're heading to, that is the yellow mark or yellow boy or buoy if you like, that's where they're trying to get to. So this is the uh, Spanish sailor, Ivan Pastor La Fonte. Yeah, he's leading them into this top mark. I think he's on the leyline. Assuming the wind doesn't drop, he should make it on this tag. Well, he's doing well. It looks like it's going to be Spain, is it? This is mark number one. And it is Spain first. He has done well. Then comes France. Julian Bob Thompson. Then comes Brazil. And it is Ricardo Santos. Oh, not such a good rounding, though, is it? He's doing it in yeah, slow motion, slow motion. now he's off. Very slow through the tack, but as you say, he's off now. He had to, he was just oh, underneath the ley line you. and had to do two quick tacks. So the second one is a very down speed tack. Okay, Kaklamanikis tacking underneath the others by the window mark. They will roll him as they come up to it. He might have trouble laying from there. Both the poles are out now. That's Mishka round, closely followed by Marcinski. And where is Nick Dempsey? Still coming up the beat. Kaklamanikis jives. Yeah, fuck off. Okay, no, no. Thank you. So at this stage, it is still Ricardo Santos's gold medal. If the race stopped now, Ricardo Santos Brazil, who came into this race as number one, would have the gold medal. But oh, we've seen how difficult this first leg is. Yeah, the wind's really shifted. They're uh, they're all on port charge going down the run, PJ. Uh, partly because they want to get out of the left of the run, which is the right of the beat, which is where they reckon there's more wind. Uh, and partly because that's where they're uh, that's the wind they're in at right that second when they came around the mark. Well, it was interesting that we could see Spain, France, they had, uh, well, a, a very good approach and angle to the mark, but they had good pressure. But third round, Ricardo Santos did not. And he went into slow motion. He's okay now, though. Now, this is the French sailor, Julia Bontops. See him here, PJ, just looking round behind him looking for the pressure where's the next pressure I need you probably need to jive back into the bottom mark and stay in the wind here he goes now yeah not a bad jive there he's safe but he's in light pressure light pressure the boats on the far side of the course the left hand side of the run which is the right of the beat are in a lot more wind and in the speed these boards go it takes them no time at all to close large distances It's going to be very close at this bottom, uh, the, the first lured mark gate. So this is Punk, this is Mia Chinsey. Now remember there are two poles, the other one Miska, who's also been right up in the head of the fleet. In fact, that's him going there, blasting through at 100 miles an hour, bang! This is Countryman, who's going through the tack. Boy, once they get up on the plane, that is something, to, and isn't it? They just go from wave top to wave top. The control is extraordinary. They just make it look so easy when they, uh, once they get up on the plane, the board just keeps going. Perhaps we could say they make it look so easy when it's not. Okay, here they come, down through the gate. Righto, Richard, call around the gate for us. Right, well, it's the Poland 126, his round first, just ahead of the Frenchman, Julien Bonton, followed by Poland 82. So it's Marcinski takes the lead, then Bontom, then Mishka. The Spaniard fell right out of the breeze on that run. Greece won, that's Nicholas, Ka Nicholas Kaklamanikis, round third, fourth, sorry. And here comes the Spaniard. Ivan Pastor only just coming around the mark, so he's gone from first to fifth on this run. Well, that's an excellent summary of how difficult it is, really. Here comes Ricardo Santos. Remember, he was, what, third at the uh, last mark. Here he is, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So uh, Spain goes to, uh, what did you say, fifth, and Brazil fifth, goes yeah. from third to sixth. That's a summary of how difficult it is. Yeah, it is. It's, and it's all about getting into the breeze and staying in the breeze all the way down the run. And although the first two came round in a gust of wind, they sailed out of it and got stuck in a hole right in the middle of the course while uh, the uh, two poles and Julien Bontom sailed around the outside of them, PJ. Well, that might give the Polish guy the lead overall yep. at the yep. moment. That's just what I'm being told. That's right at the moment because things have changed. The pendulum is going away from Ricardo Santos. At the top mark, he had the gold medal in his hands or around his neck. He doesn't at the moment. And it's now gone to Miyachinsky or Pont, as everyone calls him on the waterfront. It's his gold medal. Imagine if Poland could win both women and men. It's on at the moment. It's looking good for Poland. Yeah, not so good for Nick Dempsey. He started today in the bronze medal position. He slipped right back down. He's, he's 9 foot 10, uh, PJ, and he's in very, very light air. Sorry, he's, I think he's eight, but still very light and a long way behind the leaders. The whole fleet heading out to the right. Like we saw in the women's race, anything can happen though, and even on that run, the Spanish guy took the lead and he had quite a handy lead. Unfortunately, he sailed like in the women's race into the big hole and the guys just went sailed around him. So still a lot of racing to go yet. Absolutely, and we can see Nick Dempsey there just trying to wind up and get back into contention. As Richard said, one minute he was looking good, but not at the moment. He's gone from yeah, rooster just to after, feather duster. Just after the start, he was looking fine, and he just didn't get into that pressure. And after that, he was suffering all the way up that beat. All right, so now they're well and truly into the second beat to windward. Are they going out to the right again? That's right, yeah, most of the fleet going out to the right. Looks like Nikos here has done a pretty nice job of uh, getting himself right up the front of the fleet here and sort of taking control of the fleet. He's been first attacking the pressure and uh, I think he might have the lead here. That is Niklas Kaklamankas from Greece. He won silver in Athens and gold at Atlanta in 96. He's been a top performer for a long time. And you can see in these very testing conditions how skilled and experienced he is. Well, PJ, in this picture here, it almost looks like Ricardo's come back into it. He's uh, up to windward there and in uh, pretty good shape. He might have closed that gap on the Polish. Well, we're going to have another heartbeat and overdrive here. Palpitations. Not good if you suffer from heart conditions, as we saw in the fin yesterday, where the lead changed half a dozen times. Certainly in yeah, the luckily open stages, Ricardo Santos had it, but the Poles have got it at the moment, or when we last checked, but here is, we can see that the Brazilian's in the act. There's the cross there, Brazilian just tacked over, Polish behind him. All right, Richard Paslo. Yeah, it's really tight at the front here, very, very close between this leading bunch. And really, it all depends who gets into the pressure first and who makes the best use of it when they're in it. And it's really unusual in the boards. Most boats, you're working harder when it's windier. But in the boards, when they're allowed to pump the sails when it goes light, their heart rate actually goes up much more when it's light. When it gets windy, they can relax a little bit and just lean back in their harnesses. There'll be a lot of fans around the waterfront here with their heart rates up as well watching the pendulum moving here pj we see ricardo and the polish almost neck and neck probably in third or fourth place both of them but as we know that um Porto, he needs to get the gap between them of about four or five boats in order to, to win the title okay we can see the two poles just down to lure of, uh, uh, of uh, Julian Bontop and Nicholas Kaklamanikis. And it's Marcinski. Marcinski looks like he's leading at the moment. We're just going to see what happens when he gets to the ley line. He's coming out to the port ley line now. He's just leading Santos. If it stays like this, Santos will have done enough. Oh, close tack. Santos puts one straight on the face of Marcinski. 
Marchinski has to beat Ricardo Santos by four places to take the gold medal from him. And as we and can Santos see right now, make sure that he does. Out to the left it is Santos. Out to the right is Marchinski, or Pont, as people keep referring to him. But that is brilliant by Santos to fight back from that because he looked to be in trouble at one stage. Remember Ricardo here. He doesn't actually have to beat um, the Polish sailor here, Matinsky. He's just got to stay with him and try and keep the places not between them. But the fleet behind are so close, that could be high risk. So the moment he's got a cover, cover on the top of them and going back towards the ley line so they can come into the top mark. Yeah, it looked like Marczynski tacked in exactly the right place there. And although Ricardo Santos put one straight on top of him, he was able to sail out from underneath. Got the board going a little bit faster out of the tack. And Santos a little bit slow as he's heading back out towards that starboard ley line. That's correct what you said. It, it, even if Marczynski wins this race, as long as Ricardo Santos is in the first five, he'll be OK. They're both light now, though. Now, number it looks like the advantage has swung back to the right. Number 82, that's uh, Miska and the other pole, who's also right up there as well. Now yeah, they're Julian Bonton. Getting close Julian to the Bonton. top mark. Julian Bonton took the lead there. It was a little bit further right than Santos and Marczynski. So he's leading. He has a decent lead right now. We'll see if it goes all inside out on this last run. So that's Don't France. They have to go back Julian down through top. the gate and then a slalom finish. So round this, here's Kaklamankas from Greece. They go round this and then they go downhill and then they've got the slalom finish. Oh, notice Nicholas Kaklamankas was just too tight. Pinching up around the mark. No, he's in the water. PJ hit the mark. Dear, oh dear. Fell in. Yeah. Kaklamanikis fell off his board at the windward mark and now there's a near collision between Kaklamanikis just getting his board up and going uh, as Mircinski and Ricardo Santos come round just after them and meanwhile Julian Bontom is off I get the impression that Ricardo Santos has got his BDI on Mircinski all the time Richard yeah, he, yeah, definitely, definitely. He Whatever Machinsky or Pond is doing, stand by. Ricardo's all over him like a rash. <laughs> yeah, as long as he stays close to him on the race course, he can't get too far away and he can't get those four boards in between him and 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 uh, uh, and, and Ricardo. 82 as Mishka just got round the mark, folks. So there's no sign. You haven't seen Nick Dempsey yet. We haven't seen him in the picture. Um, Richard? Yeah, uh, Sorry, say again. Right, we've gone back to the leaders now as we've left the top mark and we're back with the leaders. So remember, it was Julian Bob Top from France, but they're going sailing into a soft patch here. Nothing like planing. As we can see now, the kinetic energy and they're doing their best to harness the invisible airflow and get some puff to get them up and planing and going. It's really tricky here, really d incredibly difficult to uh, try and stay in the wind. And Richard, a world championship hangs on this. This is an absolute incredible test of the best in the world on how good they are. Not only their skill, no. but also their ability to be able to read the invisible airflow. Yeah, that's right. I think, um, obviously, having done a lot of uh, uh, good work and got a lot of good results earlier on in the week, that enables Ricardo Santos to be fairly conservative. He doesn't have to win this race. He just has to make sure that he stays within four places of Marczynski and he'll get the gold medal. Nick Dempsey at the moment looks like he's out of it. And Marczynski's not leading at the moment, though. He's further back. You've got the French, you've got the Spaniard ahead. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, the, the, the pressure really is on Marczynski to to uh, win the race or at least get to four, point, four places ahead of Ricardo Santos. And uh, it doesn't look like he's able to do that right now. So there are a lot of things going through the minds of the leaders here in this medal race of the RSX men. The issue number one is just get going and try and harness that breeze with pressure wherever it may be. We can see a classic example there of whoever passed Ricardo Santos. I think that was Pond. Was it Pond? He's got yeah, some pressure go. and he's gone. So it's Pond out to the right. 
and Sandals out to the left. The two of them as though they're stuck together by a string. Because remember, Santos went in as number one. Miachinski or Pont, number two. Santos did have the advantage of leading by eight points. It's really light on the course here as they come down to the gate. They've got to go through the gate and then a little slalom course before they get to the finish. So they're all pumping really hard here as the wind's gone very soft, PJ. Surely Santos has just got to be cool under pressure here and not get involved in doing, sucked into anything stupid by Miachinski. And the gold medal's his. The hard thing's going to be when they get onto that slalom course, if it's light winds, you've still got to sail towards the next mark and on the, you don't have the choice of just jibing where you want to as they do on the free run. To stay in the pressure they've just got to go to the mark and if they run out of breeze they run out of breeze and it could change everything we see the group bunch right up here now going to the finish here there's right, more here. than four boats in there richard tell us what's happening as they go around yeah, the mark it sounds looks yeah, like Bonson's a start still all leading. Over ricardo santos up to second um, and the, the spanish ivan pasto is third and then the two poles so at the moment, Ricardo Santos is fairly sure of his gold medal. They're, the other boats aren't close enough for, for Machinsky to get four boats with boards between him and Ricardo Santos. That's the key point. So although he's being rolled at the moment, although they're all going over the top of him, he's just got to make sure that he can stay within four boards of Santos. Well, we can see Nick Dempsey and Kaklamankas coming down to the mark to join in this final slalom run. Yeah, Dempsey's really caught up. He was way down at the first mark, still quite a long way back at the uh, first leeward gate, but now he's making good distance back on the leaders. So much distance made so quickly. If you blink, you miss, you miss something here, folks. Boy, oh boy. Well, this could all change here. See, Kaklamakos and that coming right into the race, planing in behind the other group. This, this could be four boats quite easily for the um, two leaders overall. Boy, Ricardo Santos of Brazil's got to get his red light warning, warning up here. And Miachinski or Pont may try want to try and moon over something. Is that Nick Dempsey's come back into the frame here too? See him back into the tail end of that group. Reminding you, Nick Dempsey came in third overall. It was Santos Brazil. Miachinski or Pont second. And Nick Dempsey third. This is incredible as they go around this mark. It looks like they're all at the start. They're so close. There's Dempsey. Now, as we look at this, it's Santos out to the left. Miachinski followed him. Then Nick Dempsey. Nick Dempsey's come from nowhere. He's up to third. Brilliant by Nick Dempsey from Britain. Kaklamankas of Greece. Well, we have to draw on all the experience he's got and the oh. brilliant CV of success that he's had over the years to even stay into this. This is an incredible finish. One little gust for one of these top three guys and there's enough, the group's tight enough that one of them could take the title at any stage just along this last few reaches. We are in the closing stages of the medal race, RSX men at the 2007 ISAF Sailing World Championships on the second last day here in Cascades in Portugal. This is astonishing PJ, normally the slalom, uh, the, the quick quick slalom course between the bottom gate and the finish is normally a, a, almost a formality. It's just a quick boat handling test. But of course, with the wind being so patchy here, the, boats, the board speed differences are enormous. And although Julian Bontom has held on to the lead, the, the uh, Polish sailor, uh, Piotr Mishka, has he come, come right up to him. He's and then the next three are really, really tight together. This is anything but a formality. It's all hanging on this. All of what colour of the medal will the sailors get out of this? Well, Nick Dempsey and Pont are really close here, and I think it's whoever beats who for the silver medal. Looks like Ricardo, will, at this stage, is going to hold on to his gold. But he's got to get in the pressure, otherwise they're going to sail away and could get those four boards between them. That's what the way it's looking about. I mean, Dempsey's gone up to silver. Pont may go back to bronze. 
When Dempsey looked out of it nowhere at one stage, Santos, though, still going to be apprehensive. This is not a formality for the Brazilian to get the gold. Here's Dempsey's taken Look off. Him Look go. at him. He's lit up. Dempsey's on fire. Oh. This is astonishing. The two leaders now really light. Got really light for the two leaders. And the next four or five boards are just piling up on them in this hey, new breeze coming down the course. This is going to be tight, tight, tight at the finish, PJ. Well, Santos, he was up to third. Now he's one, two, three, four, five, six back. Boy, oh boy, Ricardo Santos has got to get apprehensive. So there's the Spaniard out to the left. So that's uh, uh, Ivan Pastor Lafitteen. But Nick Dempsey from Britain's right in there. And it's the Polar Miskas who's right in there. Also the Frenchman, Julian Bontops. Look, blink, turn the other way for a second, and the places have changed. The pendulum has just gone crazy here. The colour of the medals hangs on this and how they handle it over the final stages. Pumping those sails, their heart rate's going to be up around the 160, 170. Here's Mishka. He's going well. He's coming into it as well. It's all going to depend who gets the last gust here. Ricardo Santos is back. We can see Dempsey's drop back. There's Dempsey now out to the left. What an incredible grandstand finish. It's the Spaniard, Ivan Pasta, leading his way into the finish. And then a real battle between Julien Bontemps and Piotr Mishka. This really is pulsating, heart-stopping action. Fans will have died a thousand deaths watching this, and as the Spaniard goes across the line, Pasta and it was wins. Ivan Pasta Levantin, so Spain takes it. Now we do the calculation, so it's Spain. And then it is Miska from Poland, Bontop from France. And then is that Maczynski from Poland? It is yeah, then, Nick Dempsey. Then Nick Dempsey. And then we've got Portugal. And here we go. Yeah, Rodriguez. Now, coming down now is Ricardo Santos. Just made it, just PJ. made it. That'll be enough for a world champion. Yeah. We just have got that provisionally. Three places of Marcinski. Provisionally, so, we give it Nicholas Kakalamankas. Look, at one stage, he was right upsetting the pace, and now he comes in this. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It, it, it is extraordinary. What a finish. Even Hollywood could create what we've just seen over the last 30 minutes. Stunning, outstanding. Yeah, look like Ricardo Santos just did enough. I think he finished within three places of uh, Marcinski. And Marcinski was ahead of Nick Dempsey. So that would be enough to preserve the silver medal for him. And uh, Dempsey certainly had a, uh, enough of a gap over the Portuguese to maintain his bronze medal. All right, Richard, we've just got it here from the ISAF officials, and it is Ricardo Santos first. And it is Maczynski, or Pont from Poland second, and Nick Dempsey gets the bronze medal for Great Britain. I would never That's have just... thought that at the end of the first leg. He was gone. What exactly. a recovery. Yeah, just amazing. I mean, we, we, we finished this medal race with the gold, silver and bronze in the same order as they finished their fleet racing. But <laughs> during well, the race... They put us through that fall for the last 35 <laughs> minutes? Well, but during the race, the position started as, in the rankings after the qualification races with Ricardo Santos Brazil and then Prismay's Law, Mazinski or Pont second or silver, Nick Dempsey third, what a stunning, stunning race. Yeah, the medal positions changed about five or six times during that race, PJ. That, and it wasn't it only stopped. the heart rate of the, the sailors that was up. Fans all around the waterfront here. At Cascai in Portugal, out on the breakwater or out on the water. They'll go to another thousand regattas and they'll never see anything like that again. Oh. Well, PJ, I'm not sure because they're totally exhausted. There doesn't seem to be a lot of jumping around. They're just seeing the results now go up on the back of the board. There he goes.
jumping in the water. So Ricardo Santos, 27 years of age. Yes, remember he led going into the final day in Athens and then dropped to fourth overall. And he'd be mindful of that. He led going into the final day here at Cascais 2007. And was he going to have another heartbreaker? Well, several times through the race, we know that one of his rivals had the gold medal in the grasp. But talking about being cool under pressure, top sport, whatever persuasion, is a study of people under stress and how they can think tactics, let alone get their physical exhaustion out of it. That really is something, Dan Slater. Well, these guys, it's just... It, the words can't describe how they're feeling right now. Absolute exhaustion. The, the heart rate would have been going along those reaches when they're looking for the, that one gust. That's all it was going to take to get a world title, and uh, it was all on the line. So these guys, they'll, they'll go out tonight, and uh, they'll be able to celebrate and relax for the first time in probably six or seven days. Well, the jubilation and delight, Maizum Brazil, the pleasure. I think one of the other things that's pretty neat to see is um, Joao from Portugal. He's been there for a home favourite. He's been their top performer out of all the Olympic classes. I think they're going quite well in the 470s, but Joao to finish fourth, that's a really great result from him. Well, when we talk about the medal race and ISAF introducing this during this Olympic cycle for the Beijing 2008 Olympics to be held at the sailing Olympics at Qingdao, people wondered about the medal race where it counts double points, but we've seen yet another stunning medal race. We've had enough excitement to last the week out of the Yinling, enough excitement to last a month out of the Finn. This will do us for the year. <whistles> Official confirmation of the RSX men medal race at the 2007 ISAF Sailing World Championships, Cascais. Portugal and it is Ricardo Santos who wins the gold medal from Frismailor Miaczynski from Poland Nick Dempsey Great Britain the bronze and in the end the top three clear cut but it wasn't like that during the race it was a matter of a point or two and we know the pole and the Portuguese definitely had a strong grasp on the medal at one stage. But the pendulum went back and forth as we saw so often in the Finn and other medal races as well. But nothing as dramatic as this. What a pulsating final. And Ricardo Santos of Brazil is the gold medalist. Coming up in a few moments, the medal ceremony. Well deserved for the brilliant three sailors who pumped till their body couldn't take it anymore. And we'll see them richly deserve to have the medals around their neck. <laughs> 